Hi, I'm George Pearson. In this Photoshop Elements video, we'll be taking this photograph here, improving the image a bit here, color, brightness, contrast, and so forth, and then changing that picture out to a new painting. Okay, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to click that like button and also, of course, share with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any videos in the future. And if you really want to learn how to use Photoshop Elements, take a look at my complete training and you'll find links for that up there in the upper right hand corner and also, of course, in the description. All right, let's get to it. Here's the original photograph for this change image picture. We'll be changing out this picture, but first I want to adjust the values in here. Our picture is pretty bright, so I want to have the images or values here in the image more contrasty to more closely match the image we'll be using up here. Before I do that, though, let's take this background, drag it up here to the new layer button, and make a new layer out of it. Just a habit I'm in to always protect my original there as a background layer. That way, if I mess up at all on this image in here, this layer, I can always go back to my original, which is stored right there in the file. Just a good habit to be in. Okay, here's our background. The first thing we'll do is we're going to be enhancing this. Now, normally I like to do adjustments by using adjustment layers, layer adjustment layer, but the one I want to use is shadow highlights and it's not available here as an adjustment layer. So we'll have to do that from the enhance menu and adjust lighting, shadows, highlights. We'll just bring this one up. There we go. Now in here you can darken down your highlights like that. You can lighten the shadows up in there. You already see that over here on the lamp and on that chair, lightening up those shadows. And you can also can adjust the mid-tone contrast. As you see here, the one that's giving us the best effect is this mid-tone contrast. So that's what we'll be adjusting first. And what I want to have in here is add that in, you know, a lot more contrasty. Here's a little preview. There's before and after. So just bringing in the contrast a lot more. That will help to match our new picture. Now the contrast that I used on my sample is 58. Let me just type that in here. There we go, 58. I left the highlights as is. I didn't darken those down at all. And then I brought the shadows up just a bit. Not too much. There is no shadow and here's just a little lightning on the shadow. So just a little bit of additional information in the shadows by lightening that. So 12% on that. So there it is, shadow highlights. Light and shadows 12%, dark and highlights 0, and mid-tone contrast at 58. There's before and after. It just kind of brightens and makes the image a bit more cheerful. Now notice that that was applied right onto that layer. Again, that's a reason why to always save that backup just in case. So I can always go back to this. If I messed up on these settings, I can always go back to my backup layer. There's the backup layer, and there's the adjusted layer. Okay, now that's taken care of. We can go ahead and work on bringing in our frame in here and photos. We're using the graphics down here, bottom right hand corner, and I have this set on frames. So it's by type, which is our default, and set on frames right there. Now, if you're on a layer like this and you bring in a frame, I'm going to scroll down to the one that I actually used here. Let's just scroll down a little bit. And it's this first set here of these just solid frames. And it's that one right there. And let's just see if we can see what that is for a second. There it comes in. There's our frame. And this is the basic blue dark 2 at 20 pixels. And it should come in like that. Now, if you see a little blue corner here, upper right hand corner, if you see the little corner, that means that you need to download that from the Adobe service. And most of these frames, you have to download the first time you use it. But don't worry about that. It downloads real fast. But just keep in mind, to do that download, you'll have to have a currently active internet connection to do that. So let's just go ahead and bring in the frame. It should come in as a new layer set. See right here. Here is our group. And I have a group. And then text is just that text right there. And then the mask is the actual frame itself. The frame is the mask. Now on the text, this will be replaced by our picture. And we'll be using these in kind of different sequences. Now, the first thing you want to do here on the group, the very top layer, we can now grab these control handles and actually 
adjust the size. So what I want to do is I want to bring this down and get it to about the right size to fit over that painting. Make it just a little bit smaller so you can see what we're doing in here. There we go and bring that up so it's just a little bit smaller and then drag it out so you're just going just over that. Now the reason why I'm putting in the picture right here is really to hide that other photograph. Click on OK. Now you can move this around anywhere you want to, but we'll just be using it right on top of that. One of the reasons to put a new picture in here is if you don't like this original picture, it's really hard to try to just hide this and leave a blank wall. If you look at the gradients in here, they're really kind of moving all over the place. It's kind of a dark reddish spot right here. It goes kind of a greenish spot here. And it's a bit bluish in here. Red again over in here. So there's a lot of variation. It's almost impossible to do a real nice clean change in here, kind of removing of a picture with this really even wall. It can be done, but it'll take you a lot of time, a lot of clone stamping stuff, and it's very, very tricky to do that. It's just easier to put something else right on top. And that's what we're doing anyway. So there's our picture right on top. Now once you have that, just click on it, and it will then bring up a folder here. Now I'm going to be looking in my set of Photoshop Elements Fantasy Pictures. These are all projects that I've done on YouTube and the one I want is down here just a little bit. There it is. Now I'm using the horse which I saved as a bitmap file so it's an uncompressed image. Let's click on that one, choose a save or choose place. And they'll go right inside of that frame. So, you know, any picture you want can go in there. This is just one that I'm using. Now, if you want to see how this picture was made, I'll put a link for that in the description so you can see that particular video. Now, at the top up here, we have this little slider control. This allows you to change the size of the picture. And notice how that picture isn't an exact fit for the frame. We sized that frame to match the picture on the wall. We need to adjust that frame to match our picture. So just Get it so you have a side that matches. I'm, I'm matching those two sides left and right, so they're about right, just a little bit large right there. Choose OK. So it's now correct left and right. I need to expand the frame size, though, up and down. Now, if you go over here to our layers, notice that the area here that said text is now gone, and we now have the photo right here, and then it says mask. Come down to the mask layer, and now you can change the size of that frame. See that? Just pull that out and then pull it back in so it just comes into our picture. And now the frame is the right shape to fit the image. Now I want it a little bit higher than this on the wall, so I'll go up here to the very top layer. This is the group of these two. And now I can move this picture around anywhere I want. So I'm going to bring it in just over that picture and down just a bit. Right about there looks pretty good. Okay, so far so good. We've now replaced that. Now there are a couple little problems to fix in here. I want to adjust my lighting angle on this. I want to bring in a drop shadow, put a little highlight left hand side, and I want to bring the values in closer to the values in here. Notice our this is a black lampshade and there's black on that right hand side. It's really kind of a dark, dark gray. It's much darker here. I want to get this darkness to match that or pretty close to that so it blends into the image better. Let's first start off though with working on a, an edge in here. If I zoom in on this, just like that, you can see there is the edge of the frame right there. And the frame is actually on this mask layer here. This is the actual frame. There's your photo, there's the frame. Notice the FX. This means that this has a layer style applied to it. So double click on the FX. That brings up our layer styles and here we go stroke and a drop shadow. If I hide the stroke, that actually hides that frame. So the whole frame is built by the stroke. That's your actual frame. So you want a thicker frame, you can just change the thickness right here. Thicker or thinner, you can adjust that. Now this was set at 27, that was what I chose, and that's just fine. It's set for outside. It's actually coming in inside a little bit, that, that's okay. Now to give it a bit of an edge in here, let's bring up our bevel. Here we go. I'll change the lighting angle around over to here. I like having my lighting angles at about 135, 137 in here somewhere. 135 looks good. And then you see a little light edge 
right there. If I show and hide that bevel, you can see that. There it is, just a little light edge. It's not much, and I have the size set at 10, and it just gives the effect of a left-hand side onto that frame. Let's go ahead and choose OK. If I scroll over here to the right-hand side, there's a drop shadow in behind there. See that? Now I want to have this drop shadow on the whole thing, not just on the frame. So let's zoom back out, click on the Zoom tool, click on Fit Screen. See a bit better there. Now, and I'll just zoom in just a couple of clicks here. That's pretty good. Back to our Move tool. And now, let's go up here to the Group, which contains the photo and the mask. Notice on the group there also is an FX over here, so double click on that. And this brings us back up again. And in here, we have our drop shadow. You can kind of see it there. It's very, very small, little drop shadow. To make this better, you can move the drop shadow out by moving the distance. See, there's the drop shadow right there. Now, I don't want this too hard. You can soften the drop shadow down by changing the size. So if I pull this over here to the right-hand side, notice how the drop shadow gets softer in there? It's going to get harder or softer. The one that I used that I thought was pretty nice was 59. I'll just type that in. It's kind of a nice edge in there. And then I'll pull that back in. And I want this just a little ways out, not too far, about 25 or so. So it's just kind of coming out just a bit. And the quality of this edge is similar to the quality of these shadows elsewhere that we're having in here. So you're trying to just match the feeling of these other shadows. And that looks pretty good. See there's a little, little gradient right there on that shadow, little gradient on that shadow. Looks pretty good. So there's a little highlight over here, left-hand side. Kind of hard to see, but it's just very, very subtle. And then our drop shadow in there. And then let's finish off by bringing down the opacity a little bit on the shadow. It's a bit too dark. And that's right here, opacity. Just grab that and pull it back, and that brings down the opacity of your shadow, making it look more natural. So there's no opacity. There's clear to 100%. And what I used on mine was 38. I found that was a pretty good value for this particular image. Again, you can adjust that as you like. So there we go. There's our settings for the style settings, 135 for the lighting angle drop shadow is at 59 25 and 38 bevel is at 10 pixels and up and then stroke left as it is when we made the frame that size 27 opacity of 100 percent and then choose okay all right let's now just back this out to fit on screen this is all looking real nice now except for one little thing notice the blacks in here the real rich black but our darkest black in our picture is right over here. Maybe those, but they're real hard to see. So we have this thing here, kind of a dark side, and your eye automatically compares this value with the blacks in here. So I need to soften up the dark end of this picture here to bring those values closer to these values to help for a better match of our picture into the environment. And we'll do that with an adjustment layer. We're on our photo layer right here. This is the the group for the framed photo. Go up to Layer, come down to New Adjustment Layer, and choose Levels. And in here it says Use Previous Layer to Create Clipping Mask. Just check that and choose OK. In the Levels control here, the top control will increase your contrast. You can adjust your midtone values right here, but if you pull these in, the black or the white, then this will increase your contrast. What I want to do is I want to lower the contrast on the black side. That's the output levels down below here. I pull this left side to the right. See so that lightens up those blacks in there? So what you want to do is you want to bring this up a little bit until the values in here are very close to the values there. Now an easy way to do that is to zoom in. So you get these pretty close. There we go. Now we can really compare that value to that value. You're going to have to do this, just eyeball this. But it looks like right around in here someplace is pretty good. Maybe 10, maybe a little lighter than that. Maybe about 15. So our values in here now are very close to our values in there. And this will help then to blend this picture into the environment. Once you're all done, just close that down. And there's your adjustment layer. Let's now go ahead and set this back to 
fill screen, and there's our final picture. So this real little subtle bit, and let me just show and hide that adjustment layer. You can see how it just goes just a little bit lighter, but that little touch really helps to blend this into the scene. Okay, and there it is. There is the finish. Let's now see how this looks compared to our original. I'll come down to the original background. Let's just drag this up here to the new layer button like that. I'll hide that again. And then take the copy and drag it clear to the top. There we go. So there's the original and here's our changed image. We've brightened the background up and we've changed out the picture to a new photograph. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.